No, you can listen to me. <laughs> so, well, uh, my name here is uh, Francisco. People know me as Klondike. Uh, this person there is uh, Matt. They know him as Promethean Fire. And that's uh, Luca. Yes. He is known as Lucido. And uh, we are some of the members of the uh, UDEP team. I mean, uh, we are, if I recall correctly, six or seven people now. About mm, yeah, eight, sorry. And uh, well, most of them couldn't come because most of them are based on the use. So well, that sucks. So what are we going to talk now? It's uh, what we did, why we did it, and uh, why are so stupid ourselves, not you. So, uh, uh -huh. so uh, first thing we would make to make clear is that uh, uh, okay. So uh, first thing we want to say is what a UDEP is not, and the first thing we want to make clear it's not a hate-based form. Uh, we invited Leonard, uh, Case, and Greg to come here for a reason. Uh, I have something for them. Uh, yes. It's not a bomb. It's not a bomb. No. <laughs> it's not poisoned either. <laughs> no, not a fork either. Thank you for giving us cause of this talk, right? Yes. Uh, it's our way of trying to say you thanks and uh, we don't hate you, really. I mean, we have nothing against you. We might make bad jokes, but it, that's it. It's just bad jokes. So, what else aren't we? Well, we are not an, as an attempt to make uh, gen 2 users uh, switch. Uh, Greg Dea probably knows about that as much as we. Uh, gen 2 is usually about choice. Uh, we have this thing called a use plug, which means you can even choose what your package will be built with. And uh, as, such, as such, we understand perfectly that users might want to use UDEP instead of UDEP, and they must be able to do so. And we like them being able to do so good for everybody. So, it's also not a lot of crazy coding. Well, it used to, but not anymore. <laughs> uh, right now we are doing uh, quite uh, extensive code reviews when we are working on it in order to prevent the uh, insertion of bugs and stuff like that. And uh, usually a commit has to be reviewed by at least one other UDEP developer. And uh, if it's a quite important commit, it's necessary at least two reviews before it's accepted. So in that aspect, we are doing our best to make, well, good code at least. It's not untested code. We try our best uh, the code we do before we even publish it. Uh, because we know that a bug in UDEP can be a serious problem because it can mean a user cannot boot the system, for example. That could be something really bad. It's not a Gentoo only thing. If there is any other distribution developer around here that wants to join us, he can do so. If you want to use this on your distribution as an alternative to Deb, you can do so. And if you have any bugs that are related to you, Deb, on anything not Gentoo, please fill them. We will try to fix them, really. And uh, yeah, it's not a closed project indeed. Uh, if anybody wants to join, he's welcome to do so. So this is just a few of the people that have committed to maintaining UDEV and just making it work. Um, we have Luca right there, Blue Zero. Uh, I tried to get uh, Anthony Bastille. Uh, Lunas to come here, but he's teaching right now, unfortunately. Um, he's been doing a lot of the work on the build system. He refactored uh, 
the make file and stuff like that. We have Fran uh, Francisco Klondijk already. Um, AXS, I don't believe that he made it as well. Um, Matthew, uh, hi. Um, Tony Vroon, he unfortunately could not make it either. And Richard is actually with Anthony as his student. So, yeah, the way these things work. We told you what is not, um, which is the general direction, meaning, okay, we took this code, we tear it apart, we put it back together, what we are going to do with that? Um, the idea is, well, the usual stuff, more or less. We want something that is simple, clean, and possibly with edit, so you can read it and uh, your eyes won't bleed. Uh, we try to stick to the standards, meaning that we try to get rid of everything that is not exactly C, like glib extension or something that is quite specific, specific but you can do without. So UDEV can build with like C lang on ulibc or something like this. Some people need that, we provide that, and well, most of the people involved are sort of interested in this kind of uh, provide alternative. So. And alternatively, libc should work with, uh, well, our project. Libc, for instance, does work. Yes, libc. or even muscle, more or less. Okay. Then uh, the other direction, we try to keep everything as separate as possible. So uh, if you want to mix and match, you can. So we try to provide, yes, uh, support for all kernels, support for uh, all way to write rules. When it's possible, we do. So if you have something that is a legacy system and you cannot, well, update the kernel or is a quite an hassle to update all the rules, then we provide you a way to survive. Um, pretty much that's a generic idea. Right. <laughs> oh, well. So short term. Libc agnostic. Uh, there are lots of glibc specific code. We try to remove them, replace it. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's, uh, well, requires a bit of more effort, but we are trying. Compiler, compiler agnostic. Okay, uh, we still need a C99 compiler. That means that, well, you have uh, not that many opportunities, but the main ones are supported. Yes? Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, kernel architecture agnostic means that, uh, okay, we got new goodies with the new kernel, but we know people that are struck with uh, vendor branch that are not updated, and so we try to support them. Uh, file system layout agnostic, okay, we got lots of people that have a large deployment that use some kind of strange or weird layouts. We try to support them. Uh, it's not just using UDEV that will magically solve all your problems, but if something is not broken before, still our uh, version won't warn you or do stuff that prevents you to boot. Uh, we try to, yes? I'll just read. So the question was, what are we doing different in that regard? Uh, uh, I don't remember which version uh, more or less struck some user like uh, a Thunder because uh, they forced you to uh, do something. Actually, you won't be able to complete the boot because you need some specific feature. Yes? I mean, you, you, you listed that separated slash user was something you want to support, but we support it. So I know what that's you're saying there, because upstream you left us support, so it's just fine. It has forever. And it has forever, and nothing changed there. Yeah, the first, the evolution uh, was something 
like a, a simple branch. That it's not about what people said, it's what did you do? <laughs> I, yes? Okay, we are, I'm going to tell you what we are going to do with the virus and uh, tell you what we have already done. The first thing we, do, we did was uh, uh, making a package that could work well in Gentoo. That was not your fault. That was Gentoo's packager fault. Now UDEP works well in, with bar user, and that's because uh, the things we have learned whilst doing UDEP have also been useful for the UDEP developers. But in the future, we try to improve a little bit on that aspect. I mean, we want to, for example, uh, be able to mark rules as needing particular mount points and listen to the kernel to wait until they are mount. So we can wait until, uh, before we apply that rules until the mount points are already there. So you say you wait for you that rules to complete? Uh, Ah, uh, okay. Can you repeat the question? Um, <laughs> so you want uh, want to run UDEF and slash user is not mounted. What's chocolate? And yeah, <laughs> and then you have uh, UDEF rules which want to start a tool in slash user, but it is not yet mounted. What do you do? Well, our objective is uh, keep with that rule so we can apply it once the user is mount. You skip a key of the rules we cannot apply yet because uh, there is uh, stuff that they need that is not there and then apply them. And then we execute them out of order? Uh, we, we will execute them all at once once the bar user is mount, yes. But out of order? Huh? But out of order. Actually, you can, ex uh, yes, out of order. <laughs> well, actually, uh, it will be in order with other uh, rules that need bar user, but not with uh, but not with uh, rules that need bar only. So we also have uh, want to do an initer diagnostic UDEP that goes back to the user stuff. Uh, I think you won't need an init ID to mount your bar user if it's separated and stuff like that. Yeah, actually it's not, no, no, actually it's true. I mean, the problem about needing an init ID, it's not a UDEP distro, a UDEP problem. But if there is no init ID and uh, there is a strange layout, like a separate bar user, uh, we need to try our best in order to fix it. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a packaging issue, maybe. But it's yeah. I point out, the majority of these are the issues with the gen UDEV packaging. It is not with the source code of this project. Now, forking, so you're going to fix the majority of these in your e-build. Have a chocolate. <laughs> so, honestly, the separate user issue really just confuses the point. It just, it's a minor, all right, it's a minor separate thing. There are many reasons why we did this other than the whole separate user reasoning. So, what was the major reason? So, so what was the rate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, what was the major reason for the forking? It's in it's in other slides.
Actually, probably the best reason we have for the four, it's learning. No, 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 I said learning, not Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> my English is quite crappy, sorry about that. So, uh, what we are trying to do is uh, learn more about UDEP and UDEP in particular. I mean, we have learned a lot just by forking the staff, doing crazy commits, removing stuff that we shouldn't have removed. Because where's removing pieces, you see, oh, it's not working because of that. So the, the 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 issue that I have with UDIF is really not that you guys fork, you, you can do whatever you want. I have is kind of that you point out these things as if systemly wouldn't support that, but systemly like systemly slash UDIF supports separate users, like uh, totally fine. It supports init or the agnostic stuff just fine, and all these kind of stuff. Like it's it's like that the slide doesn't make much sense. It's like I don't know. It's it's full of fud about systemly upstream. Well, probably I don't read their uh, non UDEPs objectives. I'm reading the Yeah, I see it, and uh, just discuss. Uh, those are the short term objectives for us. Probably they are shared. Uh, about uh, it's working okay so uh, those are our short-term objectives it's not why we did the fork the, so that, that's more or less okay we are trying our best to get to this point if it's a problem of packaging it's a problem of having the default configure uh, biting you or not depending on what you want further later uh, well, those are our objectives. If your question is, why the hell you did for that, it's more, more or less that. Okay, we can, yes, we do, yes. We want to learn that, we want to figure out exactly what the hell is about UDEV that is so strange or so exoteric, so just three people here knows that. Good, we try, and that's it. The problem is that too many people got this kind of strange expectation <laughs> that we will defeat the evil overlord right here. No, we are just learning. And this is just a pet project that some people decide that was huge, important, and whatever. It's just our pet project. We are doing our best to, do, to achieve some objectives. We are trying to actually, well, the first point is learning. So. We do learn. We will probably uh, break some system if somebody is so foolish to use it, but I mean, <laughs> if somebody uh, decides to use whatever software that is not exactly ready for the prime, from the prime time, they are just looking for it. So uh, we are not, as I said, from start, and hate fork or we have some kind of uh, interesting idea to, about conquering the world at least not yet. Uh, we are just uh, experimenting stuff. The E for UDEV could be experimental. Uh, and we are trying our best. We are trying to uh, be as coordinate and uh, as, um, well, regular about what we are doing. We try to use the best practice to not make a mess. Obviously, the code itself is complex. So we happen to tear it off just because we want something simple to see and then maybe put back it together once we understand exactly what the code is doing or not doing. And pretty much it, that is. So those are our short-term goals. Maybe some is just a matter of packaging. Some others are, well, a bit more encompassing since uh, supporting exotic system or not standard system is usually fun. You still learn about it. And um, that's it. So those are our short term goals. And one is to keep everything as simple as possible. Quite stupid, we know. Uh, and if somebody wants to use it, 
um, maybe a risk to break or maybe they are fine with it because, let's say, it's simpler. That's it. Try it, contribute it, learn with us. That's it. Next, next slide. Yep. Okay, that's probably the other question about, okay, so. Uh, I'll go ahead and take this slide. Um, so, one of the things that people, we found worried about when we forked UDEV to UDEV was uh, that we would diverge from UDEV and make incompatible changes and make it so that all the stuff that supports UDEV, we would split, that we would uh, just make it incompatible. It's, but uh, we are aiming to keep ABI compatibility with UDEV as much as possible, that as, much, as long as it does not interfere with some of our longer term goals. And yeah, that's simple. So, the, when we initially forked UDEV, we uh, did a code refactor because the combined code base between systemd and UDEV was something that we did not, we don't, we did not like it being combined as it was. Um, we wanted it to be simpler, smaller, more agile. Um, yeah, funny. Um, so, we remade the build system. Um, we found that the build system for system to UDEV was not very, uh, well, well it's, an, it's not necessarily that it was fast. It was, I believe one of the initial complaints was that we had to build system D in order to build UDEV. No. Yeah. Yes. It was a complaint, but it was a curse. Well, you have to check code. <laughs> you can decide. If uh, the share code is systemd or share code, but since the namespace is systemd, well, I would call it systemd. So yes, you need si to build systemd, at least part of it, at least logging stuff, at least whatever that is in the share directory. So you're not building the share part anymore? So your UDA version doesn't use any of the share part no, no. anymore? Mm. So yeah. we replaced some so part. The question was, uh, do we build the stuff in the shared directory of systemd UDEV? Um, we, s I believe what happened is we just refactored the code and it's not sh a shared directory anymore since it's just UDEV. So we, we stripped... Didn't rename the directory? No, 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 no. We didn't rename the directory. Well, we have a slide on that. Um, <laughs> yes. We're yeah, we're building this, the no. same code. Well, You, you turn the, the single make file on top directory into a recursive build system, which basically means every single directory now needs to be built in, in one step, and then you build the next one rather than everything in parallel. Oh, yeah, this, is, this is just... This was just the... I, I had to check the word about C. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I mean, the original file was done by a Japanese developer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, have another chocolate. <laughs> so this was just the... <laughs> so I'm trying to get through all the slides and hopefully most of the slides will answer some of the questions. Um, well, actually, if you have many questions on the build system, you probably should ask Lunes because he is the one that did most of the work in that aspect. So my recommendation is that you use Pink Lunes on Freenode and he will be able to answer any questions you have, probably better than all of us together, okay? So, part of the reason that we fork UDEV is to support legacy systems. Um, and we can do that with just via configure flags. It's just more make stuff. So. What is uh, legacy? What, what? Oh, um, the old style of uh, you have rules. So, 
one of the things that we're working on is to monitor and and to monitor mounts so that uh, when rules depend on stuff that are within those mounts, we re-trigger and uh, I guess reinitialize the UDEV rules or whatever. <laughs> or whatever. Um, so, and then system? Yeah, looks like it. Oh. So but we don't want to force system D U to be one package. We want to support things like OpenRC, uh, Upstart, other thing, other init systems. Um, so, so we. That's, so you're saying you that as a system D, so that it doesn't have to be duplicated. So we pulled. <laughs> we're pulling a couple of features out of system D so that are useful. They're good. Yeah, I'm sure we'll need it. Uh, mouse. So, uh, as Alex uh, did some time ago in his blog, we also want to cover some meat uh, that have been spread around UDEP. It like to note that uh, when the UDEP uh, started, we didn't got any request for an interview from the media. Actually, we only got one, but didn't had enough time to ask for it back then because we were on a really short deadline with the Yentu Council. So uh, there is a lot of food and meats that have been uh, spread out both about UDEP and about UDEP, and that. At least for our side, we'd like to clear out the ones involving UDEP. And if we have time, we'd like if uh, Lena takes the stand and tries to clear the ones involving UDEP that we might have spread. Yeah, really, do it. Don't be afraid. Uh, so, uh, uh, one my, one my, when my eyes are on the eye, it's that we are a hate-based fork. I think quite obvious, my note, that not. That's uh, we have nothing uh, in particular against systemd or udep we have nothing in particular against lenar case greg indeed we have and uh, okay let me, <laughs> let me take one that goes on the on the hit because this is not working well yeah Better? Or better? Yeah. Cool. So, uh, the, indeed, we tried to use to cover some necessities that we had back then. They were not all related to UDEP itself. Some of them were related to how we packaged it. But, uh, for example, uh, we want uh, to, ha to be let our users be able to use the last videos in UDEP whilst using whole kernels. Okay, old. Let's define old. Uh, for example, something like 2.6.32, which is already uh, 31. Actually, it's 31, but uh, 32, if I recall correctly, is the last maintained kernel that uh, we have in our in our trees. So we'd like people to be able to use most of the UDEP stuff with all kernels if they can. Uh, well, that's slightly a lie. It shouldn't be a state like that. About UDEP doesn't support so certain system layouts. Uh, actually, it's uh, our old way of packaging UDEP doesn't support certain system layouts. Uh, and uh, yeah, we have uh, let's there is users with uh, let's deployments depending on that one, and uh, we want them to be able to use to use new versions. Uh, there is also uh, that uh, UDEP remove on default rules. Yeah. This covers mostly the legacy stuff that we said. I mean, things like, for example, the old naming or, net or network interfaces and other st similar stuff that we'd like at least to have around for some time. It might not work well, but 
we are trying how, our best there. And uh, then there is the fact that uh, UDEP is merged on systemd, and uh, well, there is no long-term support for a standalone UDEP. Uh, we read that comment on Leonard saying back then, I'm not sure if you, if he, you will stand by it now, saying, in the future, everything should be systemd and nothing else, and uh, UDEP won't be a separate project. Uh, that was one of the reasons why we started the fork, the fork back then. Uh, and, uh, well, we have a lot of users that are happy with OpenRC indeed, so we'd like them to be able to keep using them, even if they are using OpenRC. Uh, uh, then there is the copyright fiasco. Uh, I think it's the chance, please, throw me a stone. It was me, it was my fault. Uh, this stuff was basically a really big misunderstanding about laws and stuff like that. Uh, since uh, we were forking through Deb, I planned on uh, preparing some copyright headers for files, so yeah, they instead depended on the Gen2 Foundation, because as Gen2 developers, our work goes there. And uh, when I had done it, after two or three hours reading every freaking C and H file in order to check the copyright headers, which by the way you could standardize, it could help a lot. Uh, because there were different formats, the formats depending on each file. And uh, so, well, I finally got the commit, a really big commit. I pushed it to my personal branch, and since I was tired as hell, I went to sleep. There was people monitoring our tree, as if uh, we were going to break her laws. There was people monitoring my branch, which only had that commit. And uh, yes, uh, also, we never merged, tra merged that into trunk, and uh, it never got into main web, and it never got outside of that trunk. We got a lot of media bombing and a lot of uh, complaints on that topic. So please uh, accept my apologies on that aspect for doing stupid things on public branches, and uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, Then we have the code removal. Yes, UDEP, UDEP started as a learning project, and uh, everybody knows that the best way to know how a computer works is uh, removing pieces until you see it won't work anymore. So uh, we tried to do a similar thing. We started removing pieces of UDEP. We have only 10 minutes, thank you. We started removing pieces of UDEP until we had something that was as close to the core of UDEP as we could. We tried to reboot that pieces as we could uh, in order to learn how they work. And well, uh, actually we want to put back everything that uh, we removed or most of the stuff that we removed uh, slowly once we have learned how it works. Uh, please take into account that UDEP is a project with a really long history. It has a freakingly lot of features and uh, we are new here. I mean, uh, it's hard for us to learn everything on a single go. So we want to go step by step. Uh, and yeah, another complaint is that the developers are inexperienced. Yeah, we are. We frequently are, I mean. That's not a myth. We are inexperienced when it comes to dev. We have never touched to you dev before. Yeah, we are. Uh, but there is a few things. Uh, we have contributed to other projects. We already have some experience developing other stuff. And uh, we are careful in what we commit. We try to prevent uh, stupid stuff like the one we did when we began. And uh, we learn, really. I mean, we, w there is a lot of bad habits that we had when we started that are not there anymore. Uh, for example, committing without reviewing. And yes, we are open to discussion. I mean, our way is probably not the best one. Our way is probably not the only one. But uh, we, try we will try to defend it. But we will respect the fact that there are other ways of doing stuff. After all, that this is how free software works. You don't like something, you fork it, uh, you try to get as far as you can. Worst case, everything gets messed. Okay. Sorry. Uh, worst case, everything go gets merged back into the original at rank. Or if nothing gets merged, uh, well, the project is dead and nothing has happened and nobody cares. Or vice versa, the other project takes over, the old one get, uh, tries to merge with the original one, and we are happy and we try to be together. That's not a problem. 
And well, that really, that's a myth that I really hate. Uh, they say that UDEP is Gentoo. No, I mean, come on. For starters, we still uh, keep uh, recommending using UDEP instead of UDEP in Gentoo. In order to make a big change like removing UDEP from Gentoo, we, we, we would need the support of the council, and that's not going to happen. Uh, UDEP indeed is to Gentoo the same as it, uh, UDEP is to Gentoo the same as it is to GitHub. We use user infrastructure, yeah, we are developers, so what? I mean, that's like, uh, like saying that everything Leonard says, it's saved by systemd. No, he's also a person, he has personal opinions that might not be the same of the project. And uh, in general, well, yes, we are in a uh, project, which means that uh, we use Gentoo infrastructure, we are Gentoo developers, but we are not Gentoo. So, uh, yeah, oh, I really like that one. We are the definitive solution to bar user on a separate partition. Yeah, no, we aren't. I mean, uh, there are things that might still be broken. There is stuff that happens. But uh, what we are going to try is to make it as little problematic for the users as we can from our side. It might work well, it might work bad, we'll see. Uh, by your face, I, I say uh, you are saying it's not at all. Well, we might work in some, in some cases. cases. We are going to try our best in that yeah, aspect. But you're promising things you cannot, uh, uh, I'm not promising it. I'm, tra I'm saying we are going to try it. You make the impression to promise, but. Uh, uh, no, I'm not promising that we are going to fix it. Please note it down. I don't pro uh, we don't promise at all we are going to fix all the cases of bar user or even most of them. All I can promise is that we are going to try. Okay. And uh, we'll see. Hopefully we do it. In the worst case, well, we get a wall there and we stamp ourselves. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, so I think that covers everything. Is there any more questions or anything you want to ask us? It is, uh, ah, yes. Well, I don't quite have questions, but I would have uh, something to add. Uh, this project, the EU Dev, was made, uh, I believe so, that was made for every distro to not listen to Leonard's code. Am I right? No. Okay. Uh, listen, I mean by listen <laughs> to uh, use it. So, uh, Everybody thinks Leonard's code is awful. Everybody thinks that. <laughs> yeah, don't don't worry. It's just it's just a thing. It's, I've seen worse. Uh, <laughs> some or at least as, at least some of them. Well, the thing is the thing is uh, there are well, many. Can I, can I just say one thing? Yes? If you want to see awful code? Go to my web page. You have a code from when I was on the first course of the career. Then you will see awful code. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, the idea is uh, there are some developers out there in all other distros that are still interested in the old standards of EU of UDEV, and I'm sure of it. Some of them co usually come in again to UDEV uh, to ask, "Well, I need uh, our A AUR package." from Arch uh, for uh, UDEV. The, I need the DEB package, I need the RPM package. Well, the question is, why not having an alternative to system D? That's my question. We actually have it. it we, of course, I mean, you are. The, there is a lot of things that are not system D and that are still in, in existence over there. Well, the, okay, system D is not an in system, it does more stuff. But uh, we use different packages to do everything that system D do. Uh, system D do. <laughs> yeah. The idea, the idea is to have a valid EU dev, EU dev system. I mean, to have a working EU dev system. And to yeah. be, to be Someone. honest, yeah, love that. Love the to be honest, as far as I've seen, the U, the USR was not quite uh, well integrated in EU dev. Am I right? The what? Can you I mean. The it, you dev no sorry the uh, user feature slash user feature was not is not currently working you dev am I right correct uh, depends it's, no. it's still being developed it's um, still 
So can you react to the computer? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Works. Uh, who is doing the all the main code of the project? Well, y wait a moment. First, yes. uh, uh, yeah, these slashes are uh, stuff. It's just a small little feature that requires uh, more packaging coordination than just uh, changing some little code here and there. And uh, as I say, it's not just saying okay. Uh, from tomorrow we will support it because you have a, a number of issue and a number yeah, of yeah, non issue okay. Okay. the non issue is you are having that you have a server that is completely static okay you can even do without you dev from start okay some people need some bit of you dev for whatever reason then you have to make sure that that bit doesn't require slash usr and it is as simple as that okay. how to do that you have a number of, uh, of ways, but it's not exactly depending on just this bit. It's something that is more all encompassing. It's uh, okay. I've, uh, yeah, I've understood. Lots yeah. of people are still pestering us about it. So, okay, we will have a look about it because there are people that are interested. You know, open source, you have an itch, you scratch it. Yeah. So, we got people that are quite focused on that because they have large deploy that they use whichever strange architecture so they will try to contribute to this project you want to contribute to this project you're we are quite happy to have you join are you interested in cooperation with other distros obviously yes uh, one of the myth is that this project is a gen 2 project meaning that just gen 2 does stuff no it is a gen 2 project just because so it's mainly two. it's mainly for other distros to also cooperate on eu dev sure. if they're interested in making uh, if they're interested in making the alternative uh, with uh, if using of alternative of EU dev, right? Yes, actually we do have bugs involving Arch Linux that we are trying to resolve. And if, for example, well, I see that there is a person with a Ubuntu t-shirt over there. If you also want to have UDev and you have problems, you are welcome to open bugs. We are going to try our best on fixing them. Uh, and if you want to join the project, you can also do that. One last question. Uh, one last word. If you are trying to co to seek cooperation with other distros. How will you represent it? I believe that's how do you report bugs? Yeah. Okay. So we so although we're a Gentoo project, the source code and most of the bug tracking is taking place in the GitHub. You just open a bug in GitHub. You don't what? Oh. So initially, when we first forked the project, we tried to focus on just getting the code base sane and working. So we focused mainly on Gentoo since we're mostly Gentoo developers. We are, as we grow and as we get everything more stable, we hope to work with other distributions to have UDEV working with them as well. Okay, new question. Um, you said uh, you're hoping for people to contribute to your project, and it's like uh, you expect that to be or become a community project, and you want to learn from the code base, um, and you consider forking uh, the right way and to to work with an existing community project. Have you actually thought so about by one well, thing? Here's a question: um, Have you actually thought about approaching this by just cloning the existing UDIF, making a branch that has your features on it? like a regular distribution branch, and then trying to submit those back to the upstream project just by sending merge requests, and that by also you're working together with the, with the existing UDEV maintainers, and you you actually learn from their experience before you have to make a lot of cock-ups yourself and learn the, the slow and hard way. So I'll, I'll go ahead and respond to this initially, at least. Uh, so part of the reason that we refactor the code is to just make it simpler. Uh, I don't know how to explain it very well. I'm sorry. Um, but I didn't even get the part of the question. Oh, yes. There are a few patches. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the reasons that we forked is because some of the except for stuff was not accepted upstream. Um, uh, so. 
except for some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> for the except for stuff, maybe maybe it's nicer to just fix the Lipsy in question rather than walking around in ten projects, which you said, or twenty. I mean, it's just a question. <laughs> maybe you should fix the problems where they are, and instead of walking around in as many projects as there are, that just fix it in one pro pro project where the bug actually is. It's usually what what you mean exactly? Is I mean, you kind of referring to the except for thing. There was a fuck up on some architectures in, in Lipsy yeah. where where basically the the the, the Lipsy wasn't in sync with what the kernel like port. Uh, so, so well, there are other. Lipsy I mean, it's open source. You can fix it everywhere. Sure, uh, it's not only us. But <laughs> yeah, for. if you uh, have the problem of integrating the whole thing. Sometimes you have uh, people that are stuck with something that is not that optimal. So you have to be, well, realistic. And yes, obviously you would like to fix a problem where it is, but workarounds are what make uh, stuff working. Well, define optimal. Sometimes. Like sometimes that's real world. <laughs> so, I was just saying, is that what a, a distribution branch is for? I mean, every distribution out there has patches to, to upstream packages. And, you know, that's a very common way of working, uh, where distribution differences are, are, are handled in, in those circumstances. And if, if there's a problem with, a, with a, a package, why don't you patch it, it you know, in your libc in, in the right place in the distribution or, or, or whatever. Or if, if you need a workaround and you need to put it into to UDEV for, for your user's need, then just put it there. It's not, it's not a crazy situation, really. Uh, actually, uh, we, will, we like to think of UDEV as a patched version of UDEV. I mean, yeah, we have uh, changed the code, bars, uh, the code base. Right now, it's almost impossible to track stuff from UDEV to UDEV and vice versa. But uh, we were thinking of it as our own version of UDEP with the patches we wanted to see there. So it's not that different from what you said, actually. Well, it, it kind of is in a way because by 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 approaching the project in that way, you're 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 almost consciously and deliberately creating some kind of division rather than them working how, how distributions have always worked for many years, which is to, to carry these, these patches, push upstream the ones that they can, and carry the ones that they can't in their downstream packages. Um, okay. But by sort of announcing it as, as a sort of public project and, and sort of taking it down that route rather than going down the, the sort of more traditional route, it's, it's almost creating division by, by its very nature. Well, actually, uh, we don't think that forking creates division. I mean, uh, forking will only create division if there is no communication between the sites uh, that, have, that have forked and the original project. We are actually trying our best to remove that division from our project. And we are trying our best for, to communicate with, between us and people on UDEP. And uh, that's indeed one of the reasons why I personally sent an invite to these guys over here to come. Because we want to show them that we don't hate them, that we want to communicate with them. Um, did you just say that through the refactoring that you did, it's almost impossible to to sub um, port something from one project to the other? Uh, I mean, directly, communication yes. not only happens with words, but also with code. And um, if your main achievement is like making it incompatible, I mean, I don't see that no, much changes. Wait. The biggest change is that it has gotten more or less incompatible with the initial upstream. So uh, one thing is that our project is uh, not directly compati compatible with UDEP, as in the sense of uh, since we have made more refactoring. You cannot port a patch directly from one side to the other. Another different idea is that the ideas we apply or the systems we apply cannot be used on UDEP because the basis is still the same. And probably just by changing some paths and using uh, slightly different functions, you can get it done as on UDEP. Yeah, but I think you should be very careful about uh, if you think of the future of your project, um, you should try to not add more division for very little reason. Let's put it this way. Well, actually, we are trying our, our best not to increase that uh, divide we already created. I uh, think that uh, despite our project being how much? Three months old? Something like that? Yeah, three months. Three months old. Uh, it started as some sort of a regulation thing, 
And uh, anybody that knows a little bit of politics knows that revolutions suck, are probably the best thing in the world, uh, the worst thing in the world, because basically after a revolution you just try to get things fixed fast, badly, and patch stuff that you shouldn't patch. And in the end, you end up with things that are hard to maintain or hard that are, or, thing, or things that are bad. But uh, our aim is that at least when we get to a stable branch, uh, we have as little change from UDEP as possible. Uh, sorry, from UDEP as possible. Okay. Hi, my name is Michael. I'm working for the Debian project. First, some observation. I mean... <laughs> The name UDEF probably wasn't the best choice of, of word or name for your project. I mean, half of the time, if you're talking about your project or the original project, just an observation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that's fine. One is System D, the other is UDEF. Each yeah, but <laughs> ju ju just saying. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't exactly clear when you were talking about what. So, specifically the topic about slash user or separate slash user. I mean, I'm coming from Debian, there's all sorts of talk about uh, how we have to support that, and I know the difficulties that brings uh, that entails, and uh, I mean, you also talked about KISS, and uh, I think if you, if you look about the idea to just use the init RD to, to mount slash user, and you, get, you solve all this, the, those problems for free, that is just so compelling. Or I mean, the, the easiest way, obviously, is to not use a separate slash user. But if you, you just take those two sets and, and see which users are there, which don't want to uh, have an init RD, or which don't want to have a slash user, I mean, there aren't that many. And having to complicate things that much for such some, I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe you, you have a magic idea how you solve this uh, in, in your UDEV rules. I mean, um, how exactly do you want to do that? Do you take the, the binary, look if that's in slash user, and then defer the rules? Or, I mean, how, how do you know if a binary, which even is in slash bin, um, but needs resources from other parts of the system in slash user, how, how so is this supposed to work? I, I can't imagine how, so the, what are your a, plans for? A, a couple of questions there. Um, one of the, oh, I think the battery's dying. Um, one of the, one of the reasons that we forked is to support, so out of 100% of the systems out there, we want to support as many of them as possible. Um, just for instance, pulling a number out of a hat, uh, uh, system D UDEV supports 95%, just a number. Um, we aim to support 98%. We're just trying to get those few users. We're trying to support them as best as we can. Um, some users are not able to use uh, and it already is. Uh, mo uh, embedded systems a lot of the time. From what but I do you really uh, think embedded uh, systems have uh, a complicated layout with a uh, separate slash user, for example? Uh, yes. I don't think so. Uh, for I mean, example, that's what I'm talking yeah. about, that the yeah. set of users. No, but for example, them. we have a lot of uh, users that have servers with really constrained and separated bar boot partitions. Those people who would have a really hard time getting an init ID that would take like 10, 20 megabytes that they cannot use in the system. I mean, I have a friend there in Valencia, for example, that is still using a Pentium 2. And so other people don't want to use init RD for what? Like, you know, that, that there are all these distributions for, for, for big numbers of errors? Well, uh, so what? Battery's uh, dead. Okay, battery's dead. So what? That's the main point. It's not. So what? We got somebody that uh, has this itch and wants to, wants to scrap. Well, it's as simple as that. Uh, it's not a matter of, uh, oh, God, <laughs> you're wasting time or whatever. It's just somebody that uh, has this problem, wants a solution. I don't know. Is that enough? If, it, if the guy wants to work on that, so be it. So uh, there is one. Well, think of it in this way. How many people has the problem? Let's say one. And you push the next version that uh, makes a lot of trouble for that one user. You think that one user is going to say good things about you? You said you are, you said you are having problems with food. You said you are having problems with food. Why do you think they happen? I mean... Uh, if you, if by pushing something you are doing a user have a bad user experience, 
he is not only going to not try not to not to use your project. He's also going to say the worst things on word on your project. And if somebody says something bad to him, even if it's not true, he's going to be a big amplifier saying that. So if uh, the effort it takes to make that user not angry, it's not that much. Let's do it. Why not? Or let's let's make an, another item uh, like kernel 2.6.32. Yes, there are many systems that are using that and are stuck with that. Shall we support them or not? The answer is yes. But maybe, maybe you can support them with another idea too. But if we can, why not? So one, one simple question. Um, one is for the systemd developers and the other one is for the U dev, U dev developers. So the question is the same. And uh, why did you decide to drop support for older kernels? And why did you decide to put the uh, support for older kernels back in? Thank you. Okay. Who wants to go first? <laughs> so we decided, <laughs> I have a chocolate. We decided to support Oh. We decided to support the older kernels because I have a friend that needs support for the older kernels. That's part of the reason. And then we have these users with OpenBSet that can only use the 2.6.32. Okay, which one of you wants to answer? Um, when you upgrade a system, you upgrade everything. You cannot always keep backward compatibility for everything. Um, as someone who changes the kernel all the time, we break old user space in ways that you don't know because you upgraded other packages. You can't do it. You, you just, your maintainability of things over time, it's good to drop things and put them away. So, kernel patch was not able to upgrade the newer If you're not able to upgrade the newer how could you upgrade the newer They wanted to. Well, there, there is, for example, a reason why you would want to uh, upgrade UDEV. Uh, let's go a few years back. There was this nice uh, race condition issue in UDEV that uh, could be exploited in order to get root access by some strange steaming stuff. I'm not sure if it was UDEV or, Ref or FGRON, but it was one of those two packages that had the issue. And, uh, and uh, then you have an old, an old kernel which you cannot upgrade because they have stopped giving support or whatever. And uh, you have that version of UDEP. Uh, would you like to be able to... Okay. Uh, so um, we have to leave. So we will discuss probably outside. But uh, the short version for that. Okay. People want some software that use the new libudev that requires the new udev, and they are struck with that kernel, and the system is like a set of box, multimedia stuff, and you really want the new version of the software. So what you do? You try to ripple up and fix all the users of libudev, so everything is sort of okay, and then you do again for the other stuff, or you ripple down, and if you don't, if you can't touch the kernel, you try to touch the stuff that is the closest in that chain that you actually would like to upgrade. So kernel is banned. You dev, maybe not, because it's quite simple. Uh, well, I'd like to say one last thing. It's an Android phone with a CyanogenMod mode 11. It's the 4.2.1 version. And it uses a 2.6.39 kernel because the developers of the uh, phone don't want to update it. Huh? No, it doesn't have UDEP in there. But the point I'm trying to say is that there, there are users that still need older kernels because maybe the, uh, the manufacturer is stupid enough not to support them.
You know, the, 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 the one thing, like the original question is why we don't support that. It's like, it's not that we only support the most recent, we support like a couple of them, like back one and a half years or so. But um, the thing is, like, um, we try simple, clean code that that is reliable, and we always want to fix the the problems where they are. So in order to keep simple, No, you you know you have to keep always the compatibility forever. It's, it's like it, it makes your code. You need to deal with if devs. You need to deal with all these bugs. And this thing is also it's about the a question about the test matrix basically. Like if you want to support all the possible combinations of software in any version ever, then you explode your test matrix and you actually need to 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 make sure that it all works together. And that's a thing we can't really do. I don't know. It's 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 a question of of, of keeping your code simple or not. Like like um. We tend to not want to have that many if defs, for example, in our stuff, and we're pretty good at that. And then, for example, for the except for stuff that they were raising, is um, yeah, we don't we, we think that the except for stuff is something you much better fix in Libc once, and it works for every um, tool, then um, fix it in every tool, like work around in every tool, and have the if defs and have the configure checks and have the the implementation except for. It's just the, the way to work. And now you can say, of course, yeah. I don't know. It's 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 basically we like our code simple and maintainable and clean, and that you can read it, and that there's no if stuff, there's no side effects that you can't see, there's no uh, non-obvious stuff that we can't test. I want to be sure that when I compile systemd, that that I actually compile test um, everything that is in the systemd tree. But I can't do that if there are tons of if devs and tons of of, of optional code that is, is is used on some systems, but not on mine. So it's a, it's a question about about um, I don't know with system we are relatively fast in developing things and the way we do this is by making sure that that we can test the stuff as we go and and be reliable in that if you have all this abstraction code like it's, it's the same question it's about portability to other operating systems if you have all the abstraction code in there then you always need to make sure that it also works on the other operating systems everything so it's a question about yeah.